Welcome to episode number 124 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media and presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. It is episode number 124, but it is episode number one in the John Boy Media Studios and episode number one where I am in person with Miguel Rojas, the Marlins shortstop. I cannot believe that we have never met before this in person, have we? I know, I know. This is uh, actually the first time that I get to uh, hug you and ah. say hi to you in person. Thank you for dinner once again. And oh, it was You it. guys are treating me great here in New York. Thank you very much for the hospitality. Uh, and it's, gr- it's great to uh, to check out the office, man. Right? Oh, my God. I'm unbelievable. You guys are, whatever you guys have here is the dream of uh, any podcaster. And, Can and I just tell you, you didn't see the one in the Bronx. I didn't get to see that. No, you did not. Uh, When you compare the two, it's like playing in a um, independent league stadium (laughs) compared to a major league show house. Well, I I think we're in the big leagues right now. This is show. I know. It's it's pretty good. He's not actually in town to play the New York Mets, and we're taping this... uh, like on a Saturday night or whatever it is, uh, <laughs> you are here to, to work with John Boy Media, and we greatly appreciate it, and we're so excited that you could be here. So you are in, kind of close to wrapping up an 11-day road trip, right? Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is what we're doing right now. I feel like when, when it gets to this time and then Father's Day tomorrow oh. and, and all the stuff that's going on, it, it's a wraparound series. You, like, you don't do that in the big leagues too much you know and then uh to wrap around like 11 days here 11 day road trip is 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 really hard to do uh, how the hell do you pack for an 11 day road trip when you're a big leaguer have you repeated clothes uh yeah you have to i feel like i i mean our our bags are not big enough to just uh put like i don't know i don't know six pair of shoes or anything like that but uh, during this trip i already have like four new pair of shoes of course you do and uh i have to send stuff with the clothes uh, on on a box and stuff like that. Where'd you buy shoes? Um, so in Philadelphia, I went to a place in Philly. I got a I got a pair of shoes in Philadelphia, and I got two other pairs in my off day. So uh, I know we're gonna talk about that uh, in a little bit. But uh, uh, coming back here from Atlantic City, um, I stopped by a store here in New York, and I got another two pair of Jordans. So I got. So I got what are we up to now? Are you out? Do you- do you have your official Jordan count or have you lost track? No, I lost track, but it's around 140, 140, 150. That's where we are right now. Does mama get pissed when you come home and you just keep bringing new, like, I know that that's what you spend your money on. Yeah. And obviously you do a great job of taking care of her and the two kids. And I get it, but it's like, like you might not stop, will you? No, I, I, I think, uh, I think Jor- the Jordan brand is not going to stop like releasing new, like colorways and stuff like that from, whatever Michael Jordan did in his days, you right. know? And when you're a fan, you that's what you do, you know? Like, okay. and, and, other, and other people are fans of, like, watches or necklace or anything like that. I'm, I am I became a, a Jordan kind of fan, and I wanted to do this collection, and I want to do it right, you know? Like, I'm not going to get any, like, crazy expensive, expensive shoes that, uh, that I'm, I'm, I, I just saw a collaboration between Air Force Ones and Louis Vuitton. And those shoes are costing three hundred thousand dollars. What? I'm I'm Stop. not gonna get to that point. You know, like oh. I'm not I'm not I don't I don't I don't even I don't I don't even think I'm gonna get the Dior's. Dior's and Jordan they make a collaboration, and and the lows are like six thousand dollars. The highs are like twelve thousand, thirteen thousand, and I don't think I have the gut to get one pair like that. D- did you say? Three hundred thousand dollar pair of shoes. Yep, it's a collaborations between uh, Louis Vuitton and 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 Nike. So, I, I mean, just, I just saw a reel that uh, that he said that it cost that, and can't believe it, dude. That's insane. Three hundred grand. Holy shit! All right, so where are you like mentally at the end of a as a as a guy who's played as long as you have in the show? Like, I know when I've been on long road trips and I'm working, like my mind starts to wander a little bit. Does that happen to you? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the league or anything like that. When when you get to this point where there's two or three days away from going back home and get to see your family, get to like play on your own ballpark, it gets like kind of anxious. You know, like you get anxious and you you start like thinking about okay, what I need to do today just to go to the ballpark, get my get my stuff done, and trying to help the team win today and get a W today. 
But at the end of the day, you just want to get back home, you know? Like, it, it gets kind of... It's hard. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. On, 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 especially mentally, like you say. It's not, it's not on, on my body because I feel great. And, I mean, guys at this point of the year, it's kind of like you're doing over and over. Like every other every day is like kind of the same routine, and you get into into this routine in June, July. You know, like you know, there's a a long way to go. Mm. But for me, it's like, I mean, you have to just uh, grind every single day. It's more at bats that are gonna count, and your team needs you, and you need to be there physically and mentally. So you can't take breaks and and say, yo, you know what? I just gonna. I just gonna take a break right here, mm -hmm. two days or three days, and I, I will be back when when I get home. Can't do that. So you know what? Um, my son's in town. My youngest son, Brady, is with me. We're doing a little tournament that you guys can see on our social media uh, and our YouTube channel coming out in the near future. It's gonna be great. Uh, but we went to the to the game last night. Now we didn't get there early enough to see you down on the field. Just the Friday traffic here in New York City is insane. But we got there in time to see your first two at bats. It's funny, we were behind home plate, you get up there, and I start screaming at the top of my lungs, Mickey Rowe! <laughs> now, I don't, you turned around, and you started talking to the umpire about something and pointing your bat almost exactly where we were sitting. I was like, I turned to Brady, I was like, shit, you don't think he heard me, do you? <laughs> you didn't hear me, did No, you? I didn't, I didn't. At that time, I mean, in home plate here in City Field, it's like way far from, from the fans. Okay. Like, it's really hard to hear what, what everybody's saying, and I'm the kind of guy that I'm trying to stay locked in on on the game and not I listen I to. Bothered you for no, a no, 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 not at all. I feel like I mean, I I, I wish I could have known that that you were sitting there. Mm -hmm. I saw the the couple pictures that you took of me. It's nice uh, that you take a picture after I got a knock, and um, uh, it was nice. It was nice that you guys were to the game yesterday, and I know you guys were pulling for me. Absolutely. So you know, what's the rule with me when it comes to you? Remember, stop watching the game. Man. Okay. So yesterday. Since I can do that when I'm at home watching right. on TV. I can go walk out of the room. I can watch another game, whatever. When you're at the game trying to watch you, Brady goes, well, what are you going to do when he comes up? <laughs> I was like, shit, I don't know. So I closed my eyes and put my <laughs> no hands way. up. I did. Can't and do Brady's that. like, oh, my God, you are such a loser. What are you doing, Dad? <laughs> so, and then I wasn't watching, and then it got to like a 2-2 two -two count or something, and I moved my hand, and you struck out. And I was like, oh, my God, I did that to him. <laughs> the next at bat, I covered my eyes again. And you got a knock. Whatever I say. You see, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, I mean, don't put that on you, man. I'm, I'm there. I mean, sometimes you're going to be watching and I'm going to hit a homer. Yeah. And you're going to be so, uh, you're going to, you're going to feel so proud of me. I do feel proud of you. I always feel proud, but I, <laughs> I feel like I drag you down. So no I, I'll, I take responsibility for that sort of you stuff. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. All right. I'm starving. Haven't eaten today. But the minute this episode is wrapped, you know what I'm going to put in my body? The first thing, athletic greens. AG1. It is simply delicious and it's going to help feed your body and all the good stuff. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins and minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics to help you start your day right. Here's the way I like to take them. I used to put them in my shake because I was worried about how it tastes. And then I was like, you know what? I don't have time to have a shake. So I'm just going to pour it in water, stir it up, throw it down. And I was like, holy shit, this stuff tastes great. I don't need to put in my shake anymore. That's what some of those other places do to hide the taste. This thing isn't the chalky substance. It tastes unbelievable. Here's also something cool about Athletic Greens. It uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. It's recommended by professional athletes and podcast hosts as well. And for every purchase, you are going to warm your heart. Because they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious foods to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry, right here in the United States. And to make things easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do, go visit athleticgreens.com slash rose. Once again, that's athleticgreens.com slash rose to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, so you, um, you've had a road trip that's taken you through Houston. You went through Philly. You had an off day before coming here to New York. Um, what did you do on the off day? In my off day, I went to, uh, actually, Atlantic City. It's just like 50 minutes away from Philly. And um, I, I, took a, I took a rental car, and I drove all up to uh, 
Atlantic City because I want to play a, a poker tournament over there. Yes. And I enjoy I enjoy that so much. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's a that's a getaway from me. Um actually my family wasn't with me there, so I it was a me time, you know. Uh get away from from baseball in the middle of the year and something that I really enjoy, you know. I I go there and I sit on a table, I play poker the whole night until like midnight. I got on the money and I, I was really happy for that too. Oh, wait a second. So you won. I didn't win the tournament. We split the pot in six, six places. You, you know? finished You finished top six? Top six. How many people were in the tournament? 130 or something like that. You finished top six? Yeah. Oh, you're no joke. I, well, I mean, I don't I do not do that every single time, but it's like in poker, it's really hard to, to, to cash when you play like these big tournaments. But uh, I mean... I don't, I don't think I'm that I'm I'm that bad, you know? Like well, I feel like I, All right, do me a favor. I can play. Write down on this sheet how much you won. First of all, what was the entry? 230. Okay. Damn, okay. <laughs> that's a good day. Yeah, it was a good day, you know? Like You're welcome I, to go buy some more Jordans. There you now. go. That's what that's why I got I got another two pair of Jordans. That's a good day, brother. So you just stayed in Atlantic City overnight and just chilled. I stayed, yeah, I stayed over there in Atlantic City. I rented, I rented a car. I drove to Atlantic City, and then next day when I woke up, I play a little bit more of a, a cash game on the tables. Uh, I enjoy my Took breakfast. Took some suckers' money. No, not really. A, a lot, a lot of guys take my money too. You know, like that's that's how I, that's how I spend my money. I like to play poker, and I'm not gonna be crazy about it. And I wanna be. I actually want to play poker after I retire. Yeah, we've talked. But about I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna be because it's gonna take a lot of my time. And it's time after I retire. I think it's time for. Yeah, you got a little family time. I get that. Um, so you, you just rented a car, just like the rest of us. Exactly. That's 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 who I am. I'm a I'm an, another human being when and especially when it's an off day. You know, a lot of people like recognize me in a poker room before. You know, and and they say, "What are you doing here?" or "What are you What are you doing playing a one two game?" Right. You know. Like, like you're supposed to be playing like with big boys and stuff. <laughs> and I say, no, man, I, 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 I'm not here to just give out money or right. hang out money. I, I just enjoy to play the game with, with other people and people who don't know me and they don't need to know that I'm that I'm a baseball player. Some some guys start talking about baseball in the table and start start talking. About, they they start talking about like the feel, how how well the Phillies were playing or or how oh, good so the Mets are. are. Didn't know, yeah. they didn't know who you were, right? Exactly. And, and they start talking Major League Baseball like they like they fucking know what they're yeah, talking about. Exactly. Oh, this is great. And uh, one of the dealers starts saying, "Yeah, the Mets are playing really good. I'm going to the game tomorrow night. They playing against uh, uh, Brewers. They they were playing the Brewers not, uh, that night. And I, I I was just there like just thinking about like." Oh, man, I, I'm I'm just trying to get away from baseball, yeah, exactly. and these guys are trying to, you know, to bring it back to me. But uh, I mean, it's always fun when when you sit down in a table and people start talking about baseball, and you just stay away and watch from from the far. All right. Speaking of the gambling space, I got to ask you about your former minor league roommate, Jock Peterson. What? First of all, you're not in that league, are you? No, 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 no. I I play fantasy football with the. With the Marlins uh, right. kind of lead, you know, we we got our own lead. It's 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 pretty good too, you know. Like I mean, to be there in that lead is, I mean, not everybody can afford like a twenty four twenty twenty five hundred dollars uh, buying. So. Right. <clears throat> but I don't know that I, that lead that it seems like it's it's more. Dude, that's than a that. baller league right there. Yeah. With some of the names that were in it, you're like, okay, I got it. But when you saw the video of Jock getting slapped by Tommy Pham, were you like, what in the hell is going on here? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I feel, I feel like it's really hard to comment on that because, uh, I mean, when you play for, for that amount of money and I mean, it's not just the money, it's the pride of, you know, winning and, and competing of everything that you do. That's, that's, that's what we do. We compete on everything that we do. And you're seeing that and that getting caught on video I don't know, man. I feel like you didn't hit Jock up afterward. Like no, 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 I didn't. You just I I play, I play against him. I play against him. I we didn't even talk about it. We just we just talk about our. Oh yeah, it was. Right. You guys played right after. Yeah, right? we play we play in, uh, in Miami against them. Uh, four game series actually, and I got to talk to Jock and we talk about their families. He got the family over in 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 Miami because he's living a pretty good life right now. Dude, his um. But did you watch his his little press conferences afterward? Yeah, did you watch I it? mean, I watch a little bit. You know, whatever is on the media. Yeah, I don't. 
Yeah, it was uh, all on Twitter. It was unbelievable. Like the stuff he had, he came with the whole receipts of, and, you know, reading the text chain and everything. That was amazing. But, you know, the IR, the IR list, it's always been a problem, you know, because it's, it's never like concrete, whatever, what the rules are. Right. In, in fa on fantasy football. Gets you know? a little sketchy. I don't know. I don't know much about like fantasy football. And that's why I just talk shit on the, on, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I do. That's, that's my main job. On, on my team, you know, because I don't, I'm not good enough to put the roster together or, or what players are going to be playing in, uh -huh. who's, who's out, who's questionable and all that. And all I do is like talk shit. Like, I feel like someone on my league could slap me on the face too. Because no, all the shit nobody's going to slap Mickey Rowe in the face. That is not <laughs> happening. Hey, well, you're too good a guy and nobody's going to do that. Well, as a lot of, a lot of the guys that I play on the league before, I mean, JT Riamuto, Christian Jelish, um, Tom Collar, he's retired now, he's an agent. Um, a lot of those guys know what I what I what I say on the on the text chain. So I don't know if they, they Is it because you're talking before. shit? Oh, I, I talk about really? shit. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. You get under guys' skin? I, I don't know if they if they let me get under their skin, but I'm trying to. Oh, that's that's, that's my that's my main job on my team. So wait, that's why I recruited I recruit two trainers. Oh, the trainers you know? know everything. Yeah, the trainers. The, the trainers. Uh, and the have the, they have the time. Trainers and the clubbies. The trainers and the clubbies are the best. I don't know. I don't know who I'm gonna pair up this year. But uh, uh, my first time playing fantasy football was with Martin Prado, who didn't know anything about football either. Right. And uh, a trainer. Right. So the trainer was like, I, I called the trainer the head coach. Martin was the owner because he was putting them. Make money, he was and now I, I I was the the guy talking shit on the on the text <laughs> on the text chain. That 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 what it was, and then we end up winning that year, and so Martin played the next year with me again. We we call our our team the Tres Amigos, um, <laughs> and and after that, when Martin retires, I have to I have to keep playing. You know, I like playing fantasy football. Hell I yes. I know I know a little bit more now. About the players, about who I want, like who's going, who's who's my favorite quarterback, and and all of this. But uh, but yeah, I feel like it's being part of my part of my routine. Now, That's good. You know? Stanton play with you guys? When no, he, there? no, he didn't play. He didn't have enough money. I mean, he got the money, but he's I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he want to spend it on us. You know, it was it was easy taking that. He was money. too busy uh, buying the top three floors of a high rise in Miami. E exactly. He didn't know he couldn't scrounge the, up enough change to play a little fantasy football with you guys. Yeah, the elevator can take your car up to your. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? To your apartment. I, I feel like he got an apartment. I I think he got an apartment there. I don't know if still if he still had it, but it's the Porsche Porsche Tower in Miami. So. I know a lot of reggaeton singers that live there and stuff. They they posted videos before of their cars like arriving to their. So you you drive into the elevator. Yeah. The elevator takes you takes in you, the car uh -huh, to your apartment, and I think I think G got an apartment there. I, I'm not sure, but I mean G, I mean you can. You That's can, the what? most baller shit ever. That's it, man. Dude, when you, you get when you get an apartment there in Miami, you're you made. You and Yelich can drive your matching Lambos. I know up there. I mean, I don't know. I didn't know Jelly was on the. I I didn't I didn't know that he had it. On. To get one, you didn't to think get he one. Had it in his no, because he, he he got a pretty a pretty nice uh, uh Mercedes when I was there, and uh, I remember he gave me a ride one time. The car was really nice inside. Uh huh. But uh, I mean, he he he's always that guy. Like he he was always that guy that wore Converse to the field. You know, like. He he wasn't anything but appearance, you know. Like he, he was like a really normal, yeah. like low key guy. That's what he is, you know? though. He's, he's he's like that. And then all of a sudden, he got a Lambo. Didn't he say it was batted or something? What did he say? He said it was cool. Yeah, he, he said really, it was pretty. He, cool. he upped it. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to see it. Uh, ho hopefully, I can go to California during the off season. I'm and telling you, I, him. if I come and visit you down in Miami, I will be scared to death in your Lamborghini. I just I have to be because why? I get I get nervous in. In fast moving things, other than planes. I'm not. I'm not gonna be driving really fast unless we in a place that I say, okay, Can are I you just ready? Tell you, Miami's the worst place to drive in the history of the world. I don't think it's worse than New York, to be honest with you. But New York, it's everything is mapped out like a grid, at least. Like you know where you're going. Miami and Boston are the two toughest cities because you got streets that are going every which way, and I don't know 
the merch, the merch lanes yeah. are, are really tough. Yeah, I know. I I get it. I get it. And there's a lot of, I mean, different different cultures merch in Miami. You know, and a lot of people driving from different places mm -hmm. is you know, there's not the same rules and the same laws that from people that come from Venezuela, Colombia, Dominican. Right. Like nobody respect the the lights in uh, Venezuela. The rules so. of the road. I'd have a problem down there. I'm that's a rule a, that's follower. A, that's, a, that's a problem. Being the dad of John Boy Media, I'm a rule <laughs> follower. You know that. Hey, so, you know, um, everybody's in the middle of this big tournament that we're doing, and so nobody's in the office. It's just a few of us and, you know, Robbie Scirocco, our producers here, and Brady, my kids. I wouldn't let him run around New York City by himself since he's only 16. Uh, you know, I, I try to get Jimmy and Jake here. Should I try and FaceTime Jake right now? And see yeah, let's can... do it. I thought I thought he was going to be here. I'm kind of disappointed, too. Good, you can tell him that. Let's see here how we do. Let's uh, let's see if he answers or if he um, denies me, like he has the last few times. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, like last week, he said. That's I, it. That's why I don't call anybody. I think he said. He was, I don't. I think he said he was pooping. I'm not so <laughs> sure that, that I was buying that. See, look at this. He won't even pick up yeah. now. That's just disgusting. That's a tough boss yeah. right there. We'll see if he calls back or not. Hopefully he calls back. He needs to. Yeah, he should. Yeah. You know, it's become big business again. Baseball cards and Greg Morris cards. It is the most trusted sports card seller on the entire planet. In fact, check out these stats. They sell more than 80,000 sports cards every month. That is more than 2,000 a day. And it happens exclusively on eBay. GMC sells baseball cards from every era. They got pre-war. They got post-war. They got modern players. So you're probably asking, well, why in the world do people trust GMC for buying cards? Well, Greg Morris and his team, they hand grade each and every card they sell. Buyers have been trusting Greg's grades for years. So if Greg says they're in mint condition, guess what? They're in mint condition. Take my word for it. So here's what I want you to do. Go to gregmorriscards.com to check out their inventory. In fact, GMC wants to give you 10 bucks in free cards just for hearing about us here on John Boy Media. So what you do is you go to their website. Once again, gregmorris.com, gregmorriscards.com. Find the cards you want. And if you win the eBay auction, message them with the code JOHNBOY. You're going to get 10 bucks off of your order. Once again, it is gregmorriscards.com. We'll see you there. So one of the more interesting things that's happened with your team since last we spoke was what was reported to be a 90-minute closed-door meeting. Don Mattingly came out afterward and he said I expect us to come out flat tonight he said the meeting had nothing to do with wins and losses he said it had to do with relationships and making sure we're all good because I don't want guys talking behind each other's backs so if we're going to air shit out we're going to air shit out um first of all was it 90 minutes I've never heard of an in-season 90 minute meeting in my life yeah it wasn't it wasn't even 90 minutes I feel like that's that's the story that it got out there and I feel like a lot of people who who are out there, they're, they're, just, they're just reading whatever is on media, you know? And whoever put it out there, that's what they're going to believe. And I feel like the only guys who knows for a fact what happened was the 26 guys that are in the, in the clubhouse. And, and that's why I feel like the responsibility of kind of like telling people that, that something when something like that happened in the middle of the year, it's not just to, to air out some shit. Like, like, like it got put up out, out there on the media, you know, is there, there's thing during a year where we're, we're a family there, you mm -hmm. know, everybody have their own families at home, but it, especially during a 162 game season, you, you spend so much time with these people that it probably is, it's going to be really hard to get along every single day for a long year. And remember, we're playing really shitty in, in May and we, I feel like we have to, and everybody in this clubhouse believe in this club so much and know that we have the potential of winning more games that is a necessity of us talking shit out and talking through some stuff that is happening off the field that it is kind of holding us back from winning more games, you know? Because the, the expectation from the, for, for this team, especially having Sandy Alcantara in, in, our, in our rotation, Pablo Lopez pitching pretty good. Uh, at, the, at the time, that the bullpen guys were like were throwing the ball really well. We're not bad on, on numbers offensively. And I feel like, I mean, not just me, but everybody in the clubhouse feels like 
there's some things that they need to they, they need to be clean up before before we take we, we take off. And Donnie decided to actually bring us up in the clubhouse and talk through it. And that's that's stuff that happens. I mean, it happens it happens in Miami and gets to be reported as a 90 minute uh, 90 minute minute just because it was in the middle of the day and the media accessibility in the clubhouse was at that same time mm -hmm. and they kind of asked about it but it wasn't it wasn't just the the 90 minutes that we got the the that talk and 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 everybody puts their thoughts out you know it was more of us being a family talking through stuff that is happening off the field first off I'm I'm responsible for a lot of things that are happening, you know, because uh, I'm I'm sitting there watching others act before the game starts and and during uh, during the game or whenever it's happening, and I sometimes I forgot that some of some of my teammates are 21, 22, 23 years old that they're still growing in the game and they're still gonna get better, and I feel like I have. Uh, a responsibility of make them better quicker you know what i mean and trying to actually tell them things that i i was bad at it for them to get better you know what i mean same thing on the other end uh other players veteran players in the club they were missing th stuff too like running hard to first base and that was a great time for us as a club to get together and actually call out some veteran players that they're wearing, like really like giving a hundred percent effort to first base every single time, or missing meetings, or getting late here and there, not stretch, not stretching with the team at the time, and that's the kind of stuff that we talk through. Isn't that I, basic stuff though, Mickey? I mean, showing up on time, missing meetings, like that's that shouldn't happen at this level, right? It, sh it shouldn't happen, and that's why we have that conversation. But the things that the, the things that it kind of get, get bother me and gets me kind of upset is what people are trying to put it out as like we have a problem with the way um, Jazz Chisholm, Jesus Sanchez are playing, or or let's say uh, um, De La Cruz because of their their jump players, you know, and they're enjoying the game and they're doing the right thing. There's nothing ha there, there's nothing to do with the way that the Jazz are playing the game. I think Jazz work ethic is being so much better than than a year ago and then two years ago this year. He's try he's finding his own routines. He's finding his own groove in in the game of baseball to get ready for a baseball game every single night. And I feel like he's staying healthy and he's staying on the field, leading off every single day, playing a good second baseman. And this is under the radar. But uh, Jazz numbers of defensively are even better than than last year and the two years ago because of his work ethic and the things that he's doing before the before the game. There's nothing to do with the way, like let's say, Jazz is playing the game. It's the things that we have to get together as a team and clean out some stuff that that we need to clean up. All right, so you get in there. I mean, as the veteran and the kind of the de facto captain of this squad, right? Donnie calls the meeting. Does he say much, or is it strictly the players that are talking? Yeah, he he just wanna he just wanted to put every every thought out there, you know, like every guys who everybody to have a a thought of what's going on. He wants players to be talking with players, you know. I don't know why he actually said that. Uh, we should have came out flat after that because I feel like, I mean, it was a necessity to do, to do that at that point, you know, to get us going or to get, to get things straight up before we play another game. And for, for things like getting on time, the things that we need to do uh, when the, when the game starts, like running the bases or let's say missing meetings, or offensive meeting or, or, or defensive meeting or anything that, that happens during a year. I mean, we talk through that and and people start like paying a little bit more attention to those things, you know? Sometimes when you when you're playing a long season, you you get caught up on okay, what I need to do personally mm -hmm. to get ready, you know? And then then you find guys who have been in the league for so long, like let's say in our clubhouse, like Jorge Soler, Avisa Garcia. You kinda counting on them to be ready by themselves. But then you have another rest the, the rest of the guys who haven't been in the league for so long that you need them to actually like attend every single meeting. 
And that was the problem mm. that it was seen like, okay, why this guy that haven't been in the league, he's in the meeting and this other guy is not, you know what I mean? So it's like a, a mentality of everybody is the same. Everybody's together. And that was actually the message that he was sent that day, that everybody's the same. We're, just, we're wearing the same uniform. We're playing under the same organizations. So the rules are going to be here stricter for, for everybody not just for one guy or the other, or because you have 10 years or you have two years, That's, that, that was the, the main conversation that we have. How much talking did you personally do? I mean, as a, as a leader and as a, as a guy that is been in this clubhouse for a long time, I have to talk, you know? Yeah. Because it's, it's, if, if I'm seeing something, I'm going to say something, you know? If, yeah. if another guy in the clubhouse says something, he should be, if, he, he should be saying something. And there's, there's some things that I probably be like needing to get better at too. You know what I mean? I need to hear if someone else is saying, hey, I feel like just because I, I, got, a, I got an attention from a couple of people in the clubhouse, I feel like because you're not having a good year, you still have to be out there like with your personality and your attitude, you know, like you can get so down on yourself just because you're not hitting good because we need you. Like defensively, we need you with the with the with the attitude. We need you with the energy, and that's why that's why I feel like I sit back and say, you know what, I'm I'm fucking up too, because I need to understand that my job is not just to get three hits. My job is to be a leader and to be an example and to be a a guy that is gonna root for my teammates at every point, not just having a good season or a bad season. It doesn't matter what happened on the play. I need to get out there and be and, and be there for my teammates. So that's why it was it was good. It was healthy for everybody to listen what what others have to say. And I feel like after that we we went on a roll. Yeah, you guys did go on a little a little run. Listen, it's hard for anybody in any sort of business, right? To be told, hey, you gotta pick it up, you gotta do it. It's not fun to hear. Like, dude, in a team meeting, do guys start getting mad at each other? Not really. I mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have like any any hard feelings with your teammates when they're trying to keep you accountable, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like, like I say, it wasn't just for the young players. It was for everybody in the clubhouse to be communicative and actually trying to find a way for this team to actually take off because we know we're good. The thing is, the numbers are not showing what we think inside of us that we can do. So for me, is that's that was the main reason of 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 that conversation. Got it. I don't call it a meeting; I call it a conversation. Okay. That we have, like between like coaches, players, and everybody have different opinions and different kind of point of views. Sometimes it's good to listen from from outsiders within the family, you know, because uh, I I think coaches are kind of outsiders because they're not going through the same grind of players. Of they're not. Yeah. But. It's, it's really nice to listen from them to what they have to say because they have the, the experience of playing before and knowing what it is that players are feeling. So they're watching from another point of view. So I feel like it was it was good for us, for all of us in the clubhouse to listen back. Okay, good. I appreciate you taking us in there. Of it's course. interesting. Um, I want to talk about something that I know will bring a smile to your face on on Mother's Day this year. You ended up going deep. Yeah. Went three, four, four, two. That was pretty special. I know. M emotional. I was so happy for you. Uh, but on a, this was a tough day. It was your first year without your mom. Um, as we're watching this video happen, what was it like running around the bases? Oh, yeah. I, I got my mom um, on my thoughts and on my heart the whole day. That's why I was pointing to the to the sky right there. Uh, I mean, always giving my best for the team and everything, but uh, that day was extra special. Since I wake up, I felt like uh, I was I was gonna play for her, and I mean, it was a special day for us. We got the W two at the end of the day there. Uh, it was pretty cool and emotional day because I didn't wanna I didn't wanna be alone want to be alone there by, by my own and playing that game without knowing that my mom wasn't going to be watching at home in Venezuela and uh, to give her a call at least after 
or before the game. But I mean, I I actually enjoyed that day, enjoyed the success because that's another actually um another proof that my mom is with me every mm-hmm. single day. So um I enjoyed the success that day and I I felt like it was an a special and an amazing day for me and my family. Did you cry a little bit that day? Oh, I did. I after after the homer, I actually went to the dugout and I I broke up a couple of tears with with my guys and my teammates there. They didn't know exactly that my mom was on a um it, w- it was my mom's birthday that day. But Pablo Lopez when he saw me cr- crying, he came to me and gave me a big hug. I remember when he lost his dad during COVID in 2020 and he was there at the ballpark the next day because he didn't got the opportunity to fly to where he was in I think he was in Mexico at the time. So he didn't have the opportunity to to go and see his dad um, after he passed. And I gave him a big hug, you know, that day. And and Pablo was at the field, and we together have that moment. And he gave me the hug back, mm. kind of, you know. So I feel like it was pretty special. I started like crying a little bit more. I went to the tunnel, and my hitting coaches are like kind of my best friends on the team, and kind of the guys who are being through everything with me and they know more things than than other players do and maybe other my teammates or even friends because I I talk to them a lot when when I'm doing good when I struggle I'm trying to get out of out of some things and my my hitting coaches start kind of broke some tears with me you know Marcus Thames and Edward Gonzalez I I appreciate their their loyalty their effort with me and having patience you know with me and my situation especially this year um coming back from from that hard hit from losing my mom and my grandfather yeah wow that was emotional there's no question about it um listen it it, it, even though the year hasn't gone the way you nor the marlins won it uh you have had some fun are you are you the guy who brought the football helmet I mean, was that your idea? Yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't just my idea. I remember our backup catcher be, before he got sent down. We got a, a little team meeting in our in in Tampa. We were playing in Tampa, and uh, our our backup catcher came up to me and say, "Hey, how about how about if we do a a, a, a football helmet?" And we put a couple of stickers on it and and stuff like that. Dude, you look hilarious. You look like the kid on the junior varsity that was, football team that who was, put a helmet on for the first time ever. That was the first, the first ever, the first time ever that we broke it up for the walk off in Miami. And yeah, I, I mean, I I told one of the one of our clubbies to get us a helmet and and we put a couple of stickers on it and. We're gonna do a better job. We're gonna we're gonna paint that helmet. Yeah, that's what do, it needs. Yeah, it needs a paint job, especially in Miami. You yeah. can't go just that. Yeah, no, we're gonna do we're gonna do better with uh, with the paint job and all that. But it's I mean it's been it's been a long road trip. We wanna have the helmet on it, <laughs> and I mean we put a couple. <laughs> you see how how people like just smacking. Yeah, you gotta be careful because that'll ring your head a little bit, I man. Know. I know. I mean, I hit just one homer so far since we broke out the helmet. But uh, I mean, all the guys came up, came back, and say, "Hey, why you hit me that hard?" Plus, you know, I gotta tell you, not everybody has the nice hair hygiene that you do. Like you're always clean and always. I know. All I mean, the guys, I know that if we did that here at John Boy Media offices, there are certain dudes I would not wear the helmet after they wore it <laughs> earlier in the day. I'm just telling you, we might want to spray that shit down. <laughs> clean it up. Exactly. No, no. I mean we and we need to we need to be careful because as, as to, we still have COVID we do. positive cases and and all that. But, I'm worried uh, more about like the sweat stains the sweat. that are in that thing. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like who's the guy we wouldn't want to put it on right afterward right now? I it's feel like it, there have to be as to the use. Yes. As to the use with that hair. Man, with that hair, I mean he's I mean hopefully he hit a homer soon because we need him. We need we need uh, us to do just homer for sure, but uh, it's gonna be really hard for for us to just to put it on after him. I think you know with that hair and yeah, he just trying to make his he he did his hair here in New York. What it looks terrible, man. What what did he do? <laughs> what, what did he do? He trying to he trying to color some of his hair, and they did a really bad job. Like he went to a salon. He went here? to a, he went to a salon 
like right across the street from our hotel. Uh -huh. And I don't know. They, they gave him a, a really good haircut. He needed a haircut. He got a haircut, but uh, he trying to like do some color on top of his hair. And it looks like he's, uh, he's on fire. His hair, <laughs> his hair looks like he's on fire right here. So we need, we need to find some footage of Astudillos without a hat. He played yesterday, so he probably, you probably, you right, probably can find some. It. Robbie's on it. More of the Rose Rotation coming your way, but a quick reminder, every Monday through Friday, we got baseball today. It is now on Amazon Amp app, Monday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. You get to join the conversation, send us in questions, ask us whatever you want, comments, concerns about your favorite teams or your favorite players out there. Join us live every weekday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Just download Amp app and use the code baseball today to tune in. They let him pitch. Miggy, they did. They let him pitch. We had a big discussion last time you were on, and they let him pitch. Yeah, and he—that's what he threw. <laughs> yeah, he got three outs too. No runs. Miggy, look at that. <sighs> Looks easy, huh? Well, Aggie, look Aggie at this. was playing. Aggie was playing third base. But that's hilarious that they called it a slider. By the way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, La Tortuga, man. What a guy. He's been good for us. He's been, uh, he's been a spark of uh, energy. Weren't you a little pissed that you didn't get that to I pitch? didn't get to pitch? I, I don't know. I, ca I can't be pissed because I, I understand. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know if you should put your shortstop, you know, out there. I'm playing. I mean, I'm playing every day. I'm trying my best. I'm, I'm going through. I'm going some, through some stuff. Imagine if I'm I'm complaining about my finger. Like yesterday, I came out of the game because I jammed my finger, oh. and it was uh it was bothering me. Yeah. Imagine asking them today if we got a blowout. Hey, let me pitch. How about if if I get hit in my finger or something like that and they lose? You're being sensible again. Players. You're being too sensible here. Well, that's right. It's all about the content. What did you think about Astadio's slide into home that one day? Oh, that 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 was good content. Right that's there. good content. That's good content. Taking his taking his uh, helmet off uh, after he touched third, third base, man, that was funny. Dude, he runs pretty well, actually. Yeah, better than I anticipated. But the slide is just brutal. There might have been a crater. <laughs> there might have been a huge, huge. The other day, dirt bomb I, I don't there. know. I don't know if you guys watch a play, but uh, uh, second base, uh, Martin Maldonado hit a hit a ball off the wall. And the, the our left fielder, you know, it's a short porch. Yeah, it's a short in, the Crawford in, boxes. In Crawford boxes. Yeah. And our left fielder came up and, and threw to second base. And Astudio was playing second. He got the ball and they both like slide at the same time. <laughs> and then I was acting like it was a big hole over there. And I was calling I was calling the grounds crew because uh, I know the grounds crew gotta gotta fix our home play over there. Oh God! That's, so Astadio was playing second base while you were playing short. Yeah, I was playing short. And he's playing second. He's the most the the best time uh, when he plays second and I play short. I get on him so bad because he's he got his car. You know, we have the car for positioning, right? Oh yeah, the little he's, car. He's, yeah, yeah. He never look at it, and he always he always blame me for putting my position. So I need to be doing my job and and and. Staying on my on my spot, and then, and then I have to move up to DJ as well. It's, it's pure comedy, man. Ha having having to play next to us to DJ is being, it's been great. It's been great. He looks like he has great energy and everything else. Is he the most um, oddly shaped second baseman you've ever played with? Yeah, but he's pretty good defensively too. He's he got a pretty good hands. Uh, I Can always he move his feet. Of course. I mean, you haven't seen catching. I mean, I mean, long time a, ago he catch. Yeah, it's a little while, but it's been a while. Okay, but you don't have to have the lateral movement. You got to move quickly behind the dish in order right, to block right, right. balls and stuff. But you're not moving ten feet to your left. Right. No, you're right. And, but as to the just something about as to the just that I I will tell you about it, and I will tell everybody about is the the effort. You know that yeah, he yeah, gave that that he gave up every single time that he's playing. I mean, that's the kind of guy that I want on my team. You yeah. know, like I want him on my team because he's, he's like pure effort, you know, like, okay, let's go play baseball and I'm going to get my job done. You know, like whatever you put me, he can play second, he can play third, he can play first, he can be in the outfield. And I mean, sometimes that's what you need on, on, on the team, you know, like you need someone that 
give you the effort. And I mean, he's a, he's a great guy to have on the bench like that. Yeah. I get you. Um, you had a chance to face Steven Strasburg. It's the only start to this point that he's made. Cause he went on the injured list afterward. Uh, he'd only thrown, I think since winning the world series MVPs thrown less than 30 innings. How did he compare to the Steven Strasburg when he was a bad man? Yeah, it's, it's, it's different to see him uh, going through a lot and have to have to come back and pitch with whatever he has. You know, that's something I think he made a comment uh, that he say on, on an interview. And right before, before we face him, because it was his first time in a, in a long time, right. you, like you regroup a lot of the stuff that you can, you know, from media, from from video, you don't know how he looks like in, in, in minors because you didn't face him. All you have is like this video from center field or, or behind the play. And one of the things that, that that you see is like a guy trying to pitch with whatever he's, he's half, you know, after the injury, after the surgery. And, and that day he shows that he's a competitor, you know. That day he shows that even when he doesn't have the 96, 97 anymore, he can actually you know, like spot some some fastballs and you see change up and his breaking ball. I, I, I thought his change up and his breaking ball were really good. Maybe his fastball wasn't the same yeah, that did, when he throws. Probably didn't have the same life on Yeah, it. I mean, he's, he doesn't have any life because it's the first time pitching after after a long time and he doesn't have the 94, 96 anymore. But I, f- I felt like his change up was decent. He was really good. And his breaking ball, he still can spin the ball. Now he just have to... Um, I felt like he he didn't have the velocity behind the fastball, but he still can like maybe mess around with a little sinker or or I I remember one year that he started throwing a, a little bit of cutter. I don't know if he's gonna come back and do that, but you always go you always want the best for those guys to actually be on the field yeah, totally. and be competing competing against them. Yeah, when he came back for the first time, we talked about it, uh, Ploof and I, on baseball today, and I said all I want, I don't care what his line is against the Marlins. I want him to make his next start five, six days, and then he ends up going on the shelf, and it sucks. It's bad news. Um, do hopefully got- hopefully he can come, come back, man, and, and pitch again because he's, I mean, he gave it all for that organization at oh, that yeah. time. And, and by the way, he got his dough. After this year, he's got four years and 140 left. Good for him. Yeah, it ain't bad. Good for him. I think he's just fine. A um, few more things before we send you back to your hotel and, Get you back to City Field. Um, who's the best pitcher you faced that people aren't talking about this year? I think, uh, well, Justin Berlander. I mean, everybody's talking about him because of what he's doing. Right you know? at age thirty nine, he's really good. But at this lefty Ashby from the Brewers. Oh, okay. That 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 kid came on relief. Uh, one day he didn't start. Uh-huh. He came on the relief and he threw like four almost perfect innings. I think he gave up one hit. It was a blooper over the second baseman head, but he struck out like eight or nine in four innings. Mm. I I thought he was really, really good. And his stuff was, was nasty. And I mean, you know, the big guys that, that, that we've been facing, um, I mean. Are you surprised, by the way, that the Mets are this good? with getting almost nothing from Scherzer and a zero from DeGrom? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time that we're facing uh, as, a, as a team, you know. Right. And But uh, you can see from spring training that it was different, you know. The offense was, like, relentless. They they take their bases. They don't, they're not, they don't try to do too much. It's good offense. Yesterday, good offense. I feel like everybody, everybody's doing their part. Yeah. And they're kind of... Like yesterday, Marte took a like a hit by pitch when he could have get out of the way, you know, to get a to get a run in with bases loaded. And then Lindor did the same, kind of took a, a curveball on his knee cut, just because uh, there's another run there, and then all of a sudden there's a, a Pete Alonso home run, you know, grand slam. Did you get on Marte a little bit for not getting out of the way? Yeah, I mean, you always do, you know, you always want these guys to get out of the way and 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 that's one of your make guys contact. too. Yeah. Especially when you see Marte out there, I always give give him shit because uh, he didn't sign with us and he signed with the Mets. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you always want to have those guys, you know. Like you never you never not want Marte in your lineup. So right. so for me, it's it's that kind of offense, you know. For for the Mets are they're they're doing they they got a couple of good 
guys in the bullpen that are throwing the ball really yeah. well. Um, Diaz is being lights out. Yeah, he's been good. Um, we faced Otavino yesterday for two innings. He was really good. Uh, today, Drew Smith was throwing the ball really well. So, I mean, they've been, they've been on the roll, and there's nothing nothing new. That's why we're in the, they're, they're in the top of the division, and we have to play better against them. And hopefully we can uh, we can take a couple games. Yeah, right you here. got a couple more shots yeah. against them. So when we were talking about something uh, a little earlier, Jake um, FaceTimed me. Should we give him one more shot? One more shot. One more shot before. Let's see. So he did call me back, but okay. Let's see how I figure this out. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, is he going to shut me out again? God, the beard's awful. I got to get rid of this thing. <laughs> what do you think of it in person? Oh, you're fine. You sure? Yeah, you're good. Come on, man. No. Good looking, good looking beer. No. I, no, that's it. He's out. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jake. I appreciate you. I wasn't, I wasn't going to interrupt the story you were in. That would have been totally classless of me. So he's got about 30 seconds left to, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I tell my wife every year after the NFL draft, I'll grow out the beard. And this is, I, fi- I you know, I finally took the plunge, what, during the pandemic. I'd never had a beard before. She liked it, but I started dying it a little bit. Not, you know, not massively, but now it's gotten severely gray. Right. Now, ma- I don't know what happened. Holy shit! <laughs> so now I look like I look like I'm seventy. What are you What are you gonna do? She are digs you gonna it. keep it like that? Or? She digs it. I was like, so I'm not gonna die. She's like, no, I like it. I like oh, it. Oh, there you go. You have to keep it. Then. I have to keep it. God Almighty! I just I looked at it today. I was like, God, I look like a homeless. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, you have to keep it. By the way, I don't mean to offend all the homeless people that are listening to the podcast. I apologize. So I don't know. I I gotta keep it. Yeah, you gotta keep it. Hey, that's that's what you gotta do. When was the last time you shaved yours? When we when we was at home, like eleven days ago. You went fully clean? No, not not fully clean. I have I haven't like shaved the like whatever I have on my face because it's brutal. It's, what I do you mean I, it's brutal? I don't I don't think I have a good facial hair, but I keep it because I feel like it's, it looks a little bit better than than clean. Clean, it looks like I'm a like I'm like. I don't know, like you look like a kid, probably. Yeah, like a twenty-five year old skinny. What are you, thirty-two? I'm thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I keep it because I feel like it's, it looks a little bit better. But it's not because anybody like tell me, "Hey, it looks, it looks good on you." You know, I don't even know if it looks good. Or not. <laughs> but you guys, you guys can comment if if yeah, it looks good. Please or, leave a comment. Yeah, Man. leave a comment. Let me know, and I will pay attention and I will tell you guys. I'm not so sure we'll be able to do this before the All Star break again. Do you already have your plans? Do you know for All Star break? I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I feel like maybe I get away a couple of days because we have a we have a shorter All Star break this oh, year. Oh yeah, because we have to play a, a make up game against the Rangers On Thursday at home. Last day, of, so it's just a three a three day. I don't know. I'm thinking about Bahamas maybe. Oh, is it? That's a quick quick, quick trip. Yeah, quick flight, and so in and out. You know. Are you yeah, able to relax when you do that, though? Yeah, I do. I'd rather, I'd rather do that than stay at home and doing the, the same things that I'm doing okay. during the regular season, you know? Like, when you have an off day at home, and obviously you're spending it all day with your family because, you know, your wife and your kids, they sacrifice so much during the year where they don't get to see you. Like, what? Oh, I sleep a lot. Do you? Yeah. Because uh-huh. off, off days are kind of, you know, when you're, when you're playing, even when it's a night game, you feel the necessity of getting up and, you know, getting ready for the day. But when you have an off day, that's when you say, okay, I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to try to do something f- like to get, to get back to, to be like a hundred percent physically, you know? And what you do is like trying to rest. You don't go out and walk in the mall the whole day or, or go to the beach. Right. And get a sunburn. You know, I don't do that. <laughs> So for me, it's like I sp- I spend as much time at home as I can, but I feel like I want to I want to rest. Yeah, you know I don't want to be doing too much. All right, let me ask you one other thing about travel because I'm always fascinated by this stuff. So tomorrow you guys have a day game, then Monday you have a day game. So you're basically you're off, you're gonna be off from like five o'clock till early in the next. You're gonna go grab a dinner in the city. Do you just 
chill and relax in your hotel room? What do you do? Yeah, I might. I want to go. I want to go check it out. Some some nice ramen place. I oh, like ramen. I, yeah, ramen. Oh. Uh, I like Korean food. So I know here in New York, in New York, you can find yeah a couple good restaurants from. So you just go Korean. with a couple teammates or whatever. I might. I might go with my uh with with our massage guy. Oh, he's he's from Japan. And he likes he likes sushi and he likes ramen and he knows okay. he knows a couple of places. I I probably go with him after the game tomorrow and tell him, hey Koji, let's go let's go grab some ramen. Or oh, whatever. I like yeah. that. That's 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 what I will do. And I probably tomorrow after the game I go I gonna have to go trying to find some Pokemon cars for my son. So oh. I'm probably gonna be walking around a little bit. Oh. Yeah, uh, you have to bring something back on every trip, don't you? No, not not on every trip, but this one is a special. My son just had another ear surgery, oh. so he he grew up and he actually he born with a with a condition on his ear that he calls he calls cholesteatoma. So he kind of damaged his his right ear. Uh, his his hearing just twenty percent of oh. what he can hear there from the that. right ear. So he just got another um, surgery like five days ago oh, while wow. I was in, in Houston. And um, how's he doing? Okay, he's doing he's doing really good. good. He's like nothing happened. Okay, his good. doctor his doctor has been doing a great job. But we always go under the stress and of course, you know all the stuff really that you know it's really stressful. But he's doing great and he's uh, actually like hearing better now than than a couple of weeks ago. So I said that I was gonna bring some. Pokemon cards. So You're a good man. I need to do it, man. Dude, so the two times that Jake has FaceTimed me is when you were just talking about your son and the Oh, and the my ear. God. We miss him again. And when you were talking about your mom earlier. <laughs> so, like, I'm really going to pick those oh up now. God. It happened 30 seconds ago. So, let's see okay, if he's going to Come it. on. One more shot. This is the last. We're going for the hat trick. <laughs> we're combining our hockey and, uh, and baseball worlds. Let's see if he picks up. There's no way he's picking up. You have to. He called you 30 seconds ago. There you go. Oh, my God. What it's, up, Jake? It's Ploof and Jake. Where where you at, Jake? What's up, Ploofy? I thought I thought I go. I was going to see you guys here. This Cheers. Is, uh, during the show? Yeah, this is during the show. You guys are screwing up by not being here. We're, we're eating dinner, Chris. We're coming right after. We're floorball athletes. Hey, okay, please send me the location. I'm coming. I'm coming after this. Miggy wants to know if you're going to buy him drinks. I'll buy him drinks. Oh, yeah. Where are we going? <laughs> That's an offline discussion. Offline discussion. Okay. All right. S say goodbye. Good to see you, guys. Yes, yes, we're recording right now. We're just finishing up. Bye. Okay. Love you guys. There they are. It's it's Trevor Plouffe and Jake Storiale. There you go. Third time was a charm. Nice. We got one. We got we got to talk to them, and it's, it's good to say hi to them. You, you travel all the way here, and guys want to go to dinner instead. <laughs> Unbelievable. We'll have to bring that up at the next uh, human resources meeting or something here at John Boy Media. Thank you so much for coming by the studio. Of course, man. man. It, it was a pleasure for me coming here and actually uh, – Get to uh, get to be here in person with you guys for sure. That's uh, so, nice. So here's the deal. Next time you guys are in town, I don't know. The next time you come to New York, you probably have a new. Job I think uh, I think it's gonna be soon. It's gonna be in July, oh, early in July? early July. Yeah. Well, what you do is is we'll make sure that you come here when everybody's here and working in the. I mean, they'd love to see. You. I won't be here. Of know, course, I live in Los Angeles. No, I talk. I talk to the guys and yeah. probably come by and in the middle of the day when they're working. So I, I can see. I forgot. Have you been to LA yet this year? No. Oh, well, we, we, went, we went to, we oh, went to we went to San Diego Anaheim. and we went Anaheim. to Anaheim. Yeah. Right. Two days. But not the Dodgers. Not the Dodgers yet. When's that happening? Later. August, I think. Later. I gotta see here. Oh yeah, August. It's, it's not in July. It's in, it's in August or, or or September. Yeah. August is a very, very difficult month for me. I've got a lot going on, unfortunately. That's uh, there's there's a lot of my worlds. Let's see here. Let's see what your schedule looks like. August. You are in Los Angeles, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. Of course you are. Where are you here. gonna be? Cleveland, Ohio. I'm I'm calling the Browns preseason games. Yeah, it'll be Good fun. For you. Yeah, it's something new, something different. Pretty My hometown nice, team. Nice. Of course. Yeah. It's a dream. It is a dream. It'll be really fun. 
Uh, it, it was great seeing you in person. I, I love it. Everybody always loves your positivity. We appreciate you kind of taking us inside the clubhouse. You take us places that a, a lot of people out there don't. And it, it's really helpful for those of us that are baseball fans. We just love everything about you. So keep doing your thing. Hopefully things will turn around for you a little bit at Dish and the Marlins as well. And keep grinding, brother. Yeah, I mean that's that's who, that's what all, all I can do, and uh, I will I will keep doing my my best to just not just for me, but for the team as well, and to get everybody going. I like it, and um, if things late in September or in the point where the Marlins aren't in playoff contention and you have a chance to pitch, Johnny, I might, I might, I might. Or maybe you'll just manage again and put yourself in. <laughs> there we go. That's a, that's a good idea. A uh, special shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the one and only Robbie Shirocco, and our summer intern, Alden Stone. We always appreciate the help. That is Miguel Rojas. I am Chris Rose. Thanks for tuning in to the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.